So I had a few requests on how I make my sounds that I posted in a couple of demo videos. So I thought it'd be interesting to try and go back through my thought processes and show my approach to making these sounds. And I'm hoping this will be the first in a series of videos like this. And this sound in the background is what I'm gonna look at first. A kind of subterranean stab. So I like to start with a default patch. That's a sawtooth wave with the sustain up high on the envelope and everything else down and the filter wide open. And that just gives us a really nice blank slate to work with when we're trying to hear what we're doing when we're designing sounds. Uh, and for this one, um, a stab type sound, we're going to change the voice mode, shift one to change mode. And we're going to press that again to select the mode and go to unison A, which is a mono mode that gives you all six voices with every key press, a full unison mode for a really nice big wide sound once you get a bit of detune in there. And you can change the detune with this slider here. That's probably a bit much, turn it down a bit. Let's start with that for now. And I'm gonna go out of voice mode, get ourselves a square wave, a little bit of pulse width there, because we are gonna mix in a bit of pulse wave as well. Set the levels with the sub oscillator a little bit higher for a bit of depth. I'm not gonna have any noise and Low pass filter right down because we're going to use modulation like the envelopes to open it up. A little bit of resonance for bite too much. Really thins the sound out. Can be nice for some things, but uh, generally I'll be using that quite low just to add a bit of bite. And... In terms of envelope, we're going to have a bit of envelope. We need to actually set the envelope and the filter envelope. We're going to have both the envelopes with a softish but fairly fast attack and quite a long release. And on the filter, have it sweeping down to quite a lowish level on the filter. But conversely, for the amp, I'll have a similar shape but have the amp envelope staying up quite high. Just a tiny bit less release on there just so it tails off a little quicker. And maybe make the attack just a tiny bit shorter too. The envelope behavior on the Nymphes is, is quite characterful. Uh, it tends to jump about a bit when it's not finished uh, one phase or another of the envelope and sometimes you get it jumping in, but that is, it gives it a, an interesting bit of character. And for this sound, we want to use the Nymphes's really nice chord mode, which we access. Uh, well, we access the setting of the chord, the intervals that it will play automatically for us when we press the keys uh, with this slider here, shift and here. And at the bottom, it's just as you'd expect, just normal unison mode. And then as you go up, you can get different intervals. So that's quite a nice early 90s, a sort of 93 jungly type of vibe. And then further up we get. That real classic happy fifth type uh, chord, that chord stab that's so common in the more positive vibe hardcore from the early 90s 
So I'm going to leave that setting there. You can actually set your own chord intervals using number seven on voice mode chord there. And then when you go into that, you can go up and down the slider and set your own by pressing the keyboard uh, and it will save whatever notes you want for that patch. So that's really nice as well. So you can have some really interesting effects like multiple octaves on one note, um, which yeah, there's lots of experimenting you can do with it, which is another really nice feature that opens up the possibilities massively. Uh, going back to the filter, we're not going to have any high pass filter on this one to begin with. We'll bring a bit in with the modulations. We'll bring the keyboard tracking up to full so that it tracks the keys that you press in terms of frequency, uh, higher notes, higher frequency on the filter. Um, and we'll have some filter LFO in there as well a little bit. We haven't set the LFOs yet. And we are going to... I might have a tiny bit of glide, just a little hint, because that's sometimes quite nice with stabs. We'll see how that sounds. It can be a bit much. Um, Detune, we've already looked at, but let's now we've got more sound in. That's a bit too much. Let's bring that back down, yeah. Pitch LFO, I'm going to have actually quite high because we're, what we're going to do is bring in the pitch modulation from the LFO 1 in over time. So although it's high, it won't happen until we hold the note down. And a little bit of pitch modulation on the envelope as well is often quite nice, I think, to add a bit of an organic element to the attack of the sound. Just a bit of a pitch sweep, but very subtle, so it's not too obvious. But just all these little things add up, these little details. And uh, in terms of what we've got next, we've got LFO1. So as I say, I'm going to bring it in with a bit of delay. So hold shift and go on that uh, slider there. And about going to bring it in after a little while when we hold it. <laughs> And we're also going to have it a lot faster. Um, I'm actually going to push that up to like an audio rate growl that comes in just for a bit of interest. Uh, and set the wave to a triangle wave for a standard vibrato kind of effect. And then, and we want fade down to zero so it carries on for as long as you hold the note. And to access the extra parameters for the LFO, we go into menu two, which we're already in. Then we hold shift and go to. So we're in LFO two down here mode, but when we hold shift and menu again, it, we see the LED starts flashing again. And now we're actually in the extra parameters for both LFOs. LFO one we access now. And if we hold, if we get shift up, then we access the extra parameters for LFO2. LFO1 is the per voice polyphonic LFO that is rooted to pitch and filter. You can't change that, uh, just the amounts that it goes to each. And LFO2 is a global F LFO that affects everything uh, and is much more flexible. So between them, you can do quite a lot. And in this instance, what I want to do is just put LFO1 up into the higher range. So if we, now we're in this mode, if we move this fader here, you can see this LED changes from nothing to very fast to full uh, solid. And the bottom one is uh, when you want the LFO linked to MIDI clock, synced to MIDI clock, should I say, and then a slow range a faster range and then tracking the keyboard so the faster the higher the note the faster the LFO will go which is which can be very useful as well for some sounds um, where you want the ratio of the pitch to the oscillation effect to remain constant uh, in this case I'm going to go for the fast range i'm going to exit back out and save that and now we should have a quite a growling audio rate 
LFO modulation coming in. After a while, so that can be quite nice. The fact that the LFOs go so fast. Just to give it a bit of grunge and interest and take away that simple, slightly cheesy sound that you get if you don't add in these subtle little effects. And now we can move to LFO2, which we were already in. That's menu and two. And LFO2, as I say, is much more versatile, although it's not polyphonic, but that is useful in different ways. Once you're in this mode, these two sliders here control the parameters for LFO2. So I'm going to have the rate down at zero, and I'm actually going to go for a sawtooth wave. Uh, and I'll explain why in a minute. And in terms of delay, I'm going to put that down to none and fade. I'm going to have up at maximum. And if you do that, that essentially turns the LFO into an envelope because it makes it just go through the cycle once. So for a sawtooth wave, you just get the attack, then the release uh, once, which is a I mean, you just get the up, the upward phase, then the then the slow tail uh, once, which makes it essentially like a an envelope with a fast attack and a and a, a decay that just goes off. So you can use it as a third envelope that can actually modulate all of these different parameters um, on these other sliders. So it's really just opens up a whole mod matrix that's hidden under the hood really um so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna have a sawtooth wave for that and what you also need to do is go into the extra parameters i'm going to press shift to ex access the lfo2 parameters and i'm just going to make sure that we've got it on slow and key synced as well this other slider in this mode turns key syncing on or off should I say if it's at the bottom and on at the top so now we've got that on so every time we hit a key the LFO will start from the same place um, it may be actually that if you're doing the one-shot LFO that happens automatically I should probably look into that but either way if you want the uh, LFO to sync to the key presses that's how you do it and now let's go back into LFO2 and just choose what to modulate with our new envelope. And I'm going to give it a bit of a change. What I quite like doing is a bit of wave mix in there. So you can kind of sweep between the different waveforms. And also as we're going to bring in a bit of pulse width, pulse wave with that, we could do a little bit of pulse width modulation as well. Make the volumes of the oscillators pump up a bit as well just to make we've already got that going on with the envelope but i think if you've got two envelopes going on it can create quite a nice uh, effect and let's bring a bit of no a little bit of noise in with the envelope as well and what i do like to do is affect the detune with this kind of modulation so that you just get more evolution of the sound in different ways it's just for me that's what a lot of this is about is just adding more things that change over time just to really add interest uh, to the sound uh, and i'm going to make it modulate the low pass filter and to a lesser extent the high pass as well and we can adjust all of these let's see how that sounds <laughs> Yeah, it sounded quite cool. And last of all, I'm going to look at, if we go to number three in the menu, these sliders here control the reverb. So uh, it, it has a nice inbuilt reverb that has quite a unique character that some people seem to complain about a bit, but I, I like it because I would rather it had a unique reverb. If you want a reverb that's just pretty bog standard, um, 
workhorse type reverb you may as well use an external one i think um i'd rather have one that's saved with the patch that's actually quite distinctive and you can use as it's for sound design in its own right and this has quite an interesting metallic stone like effect um that i just find really interesting for certain soundscapes and you can choose the level that you bring it in and you could always have it very subtle anyway if you just want a more just a bit of a subtle sense of space uh, and the filter here uh, can be used to tame some of the metallic metallic high end so let's take that down a bit decay can be really long or you can have that quite a bit shorter and size is kind of relates to the tone of the sound and the size of the imaginary space that it's set in I guess so I'll probably have those yeah fairly fairly modest settings on those we're not going crazy with this one filter down quite low to tame that and the mix yeah halfway up So, we're pretty much there with the sound. I'm going to actually bring the filter down a bit. I feel like we're going a bit bright. So, what I'm going to do is go into LFO2 again. And let's make it modify. that's sounding a bit more like it um so maybe we're going too high on the volume here a little bit yeah but uh, uh, that's sounding pretty good i think 